My name's Gage, and I sing for Speak Wolves. My name's Corey, I play guitar. My name's Seth, I play bass. And you guys rocked earlier. That was, that was really good. Thank you. So, hey, can you guys like tell me a little bit about your faith? Like, did you guys grow up in church? Um, yeah, I, I grew up in church. Um, and then I, uh, I fell away for a while, became an atheist for like a year, and uh, like had sex and did drugs and drank quite a bit, and then I, uh, I found God like for myself, you know, made like a personal like, relationship with it instead of just like, oh, it's what my parents taught me to do, so that's what I'm going to do, you know, I yeah. mean like more personal thing, and but that's like what it really clicked for me. Like how did that come about though, like what happened? Um, my, my mom walked out on me when I was 18, my parents got divorced, and like they were big in the church and stuff like that, and uh, so yeah, like she left my little sister, and then um, dropped out of high school my senior year, and uh, like tried out for this band in Kentucky, and did all this like crazy stuff, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I just kind of, God just kind of pulled me out of the rut, you know, I just knew I needed, knew I needed to like, make a change, right. that's what it was. And uh, I knew if I kept going the way I was, I, knew I was just gonna wind up dead somewhere. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what it was. So. What about you guys? Like, how'd you come to faith apart from your parents? Uh, uh, mine, I had a similar. I, I needed to experience it for myself. I grew up in church as well. My mom was really diligent in teaching us to pray and stuff like that. So I've been a Christian my whole life, but I dealt with depression a lot. Uh, my, my parents got divorced when I was really little, and so that caused some things that found me in a, in a place where I wanted to kill myself, and I feel like that was where God really showed himself to me. I was 13 years old, um, and I was ready to kill. I had a gun to my head, actually, and uh, and I feel like that's, he, the thing that he told me that, you know, is that you're my son if no one else will claim you, and I have a purpose for you. And, I started to read in the Bible the places where that's that's what He promises us. You know, like in Jeremiah when He talks about before we even existed that He knew us and that He had a plan and purpose and all those things. And so I just began to get into ministry and stuff at church. I actually worked as an associate youth fa uh, youth pastor for uh, three youth years. Pastor. Yeah, youth <laughs> a youth pastor before I uh, started playing in touring bands full time. But um, yeah, God makes life an adventure. Yeah. Cool. You want to share? Yeah, well, I've, I've always kind of, I just grew up in church and never, I haven't really had any deep experiences like these guys, but I just, I grew up in church with my parents and yeah. it's been pretty smooth sailing. Ah, cool. Well, I praise guess. God for that. <laughs> Sorry, no big story, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. So, like, how did you guys meet? Like, how did the band start? <laughs> um... Well, our drummer started the band three years ago? Yeah, four years ago. Four years ago. And uh, it's like a, all those members like fell through, I guess, and it's a bunch of different member changes and stuff. And I joined the band a year ago. I worked for a band called O Sleeper, who was on our same record label. I worked with them for like two years. Um, and they knew, they knew these guys. Um, they knew Phil and stuff like that. So uh, after a tour, I got into Phil and flew out to North Carolina, tried out, made the band, and that was so over, a little bit over a year ago now. Cool. So, yeah. So like, how is it, how how do you make your voice do all those <laughs> noises and still have a voice to talk? Uh, I don't know. It's like a muscle. Like I'm just screaming. I just like <laughs> if someone was like stabbing me in the back, like that's how I'd sound. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just screaming. <laughs> just, I don't have like kids like what's your technique and stuff like that. Like. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, like, I'm just screaming. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just passionate about what I'm like, what I'm singing about, you know. Yeah. And I feel like the only way to like get my point across is like, I have to scream this so like you know like what this means to me. You know what yeah. I mean? And there's parts where we sing too, and there's just like it's the same way. It's like I don't feel like let this scream or anything. Like yeah. I to sound pretty so people will like it, you know, cool. <laughs> whatever. So. Yeah. So, well, like, what about the church? Like, how how does the church receive like your music? Like, yeah. are they like this is cool, or are they like this is scary? Well, I like, think uh, yeah, like I think now that I think the church is becoming more open, yeah. like because you know I feel like 
like this, like our generation is the future of the church. Right. You know, like we're gonna be the ones that pick up when all these other people die. Right. You know, it's like you're not gonna live forever. You know what I mean? Like your old ways, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it's it's like they're like one of my pastors said that the message needs to stay the same, but the what is it, the, the method the method the needs to change. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it is. And I think that is just like so awesome. But yeah. it's it's such a simple concept. But some people just like refuse to take that. They're like, no, because well, that's wrong. Like some people will see our band, and they're like, oh, they have like have like a, you know, bull skull on with their on, like on their merch table, and they like incense on stage, and we're in all black. Those kids are going to hell. Like, and they're screaming like, and they're just some people are just closed minded, and that's fine. Like, it's okay if, if you're gonna act like that. Then I don't want you to listen to my band anyways. I could care less. You know what I mean? Like, because the people who need to hear will hear it. Right. Because like God will make a way for it. Right. And I think people in the church are realizing that now and becoming more open to that. And I feel like when we go play churches, it's always like, I feel like it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think they're, and of course, there's, like I said, some of those people are just like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that. You I, know, think, but. I think that when they start, they can be skeptical to a degree. But I think that if you watch us, um, it's definitely angry. The things that we're screaming about are, th you know, like his, this record is about that journey that he had in his life like that's not a happy smiley thing but the heart of our band is we love kids like we're taking people's hats and sunglasses and we take cell phones if somebody's on one like we we played a church at the beginning of the last tour and there's a kid named Landon that we met that is an awesome little kid we made friends with and like there's one of the songs we we jumped in the crowd and he tackled him at one point I picked him up and carried him around the pit on my shoulder another just like we want it to be fun for kids. We realize that it's it's an expression of things that are that are frustrating and everything else. But it's it's meant you know it's meant with the heart of community and all those things. And I feel like that that translates to even you know some of the older pastors and things that are skeptical. Like when I first started playing this music, it made me laugh. My grandfather told me that it was a contradiction to be in a Christian heavy band, <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, I I love Jeremy Camp, but. A lot of K Love stuff, like I can't jam out to, like I can't POD or something that I grew up on like that. Right. I feel like that kids that listen to us is the same kind of thing. Like you, you can only identify with what you identify with. Yeah. yeah. So like when you guys are performing, like for you, is it is it like a job? Because you guys look like you're having a blast. Like, do you even feel like you're like at work, or is it uh, like no, just really. a ball? Not really. Some days, I think. Some There's days. Some, some days. Are days. Better than yeah, you yeah. know, of course, like, you're on the road, it's like, man, I'm on the road, for, we're on the road for, like, we have a tour coming out, it's like, it's three months long, right? and it's like, full all over, I go to Canada and stuff like that, and like, it's like, man, that's a huge blessing, like, that's so awesome, like, like, I feel like, I wake up every day, and I could be sleeping in a Walmart parking lot, and like, wake up with, like, no AC in the van, and be like, covered in sweat, I'm just like, okay, like, for me, this beat's put on a tie and working Absolutely. in a cubicle every day and just staring at a computer screen. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. And it's like, I'm, like, we just put out a new record last month and um, it's on it's on solid state and it's all I've ever wanted to do. Right? right? It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do since I was like 14 years old. So it's like, I'm about to be 22 and it's like, I have accomplished my life, like my life goal at like, you know, 21. And it's like, yeah, like not many people get to say that, you know, I mean, people work their whole lives to get to something like, oh, I did it when I'm like 60. It's like, yeah, dude, well, now I'm, now I'm like good, so now I can just like, I can die tomorrow, I'm like, all right, that's sweet, like, I'm totally cool with that, you know? To take it back to what you asked, too, it, we keep it in mind that it is our job to preserve our ability to have a blast for a living. Yeah. Like, we want to be as professional as possible and... and you know, the reason that we're there are the kids, you know, if, if they didn't care about what we're doing, it wouldn't matter how good a musician we feel like we were, we'd be at home. Right. And so we, we take that interaction and relationship very seriously, but, you know, in the end, we are blessed to get up and do what we want to do every day instead of what we have to do. Yeah. It's awesome. So, like, let's talk about the new album. Like, what was, like, your, like, you guys wrote most of it, right? Oh, we wrote all of it. Okay, yeah. good. So, like... <laughs> Some bands don't write their own music, which is which shows your talent that you actually yeah, no write and compose, and then perform it. But like, what was your mindset when you were writing? Like, what was the, what were you thinking? What was your theme? Um, like, well, I wanted to like write about my parents getting divorced. You know, it happened like three years ago, but I never had an outlet for it. You know what I mean? Like, 
Um, my mom left, my dad like built this porch in the backyard, you know, and that was like his way of like getting over it, you know what I mean? So I was like, when, in the, when I was in the studio, I was like, this is me building my porch, you know what I mean? Like, this is me getting over it. Like, and the thing is, I know there's a million other people who go through so many other things that are like way worse than what I'm going through, yeah. you know? But I just wanted people to know that, that they're not alone. You know what I mean? Like, like we have a buddy uh, back home in North Carolina. His parents left him in an elevator when he was like one or like I mean young. I mean like Aww. yeah, like pretty much like around the hospital. Just like left him in an elevator, you know. Aww. And it's like I think of him. I'm just like, dude, that's so crazy. But he like loves the Lord yeah. and is like doing what he wants to do, you know, and like pursuing his dreams and his passions, like. And I, I love that and I admire that, you know. And it's like, well. I know he'll relate to this because, you know, at one point in his life he felt unwanted, he didn't feel loved, like, he felt, you know, dried up, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, like, and, um, so that's what I wanted to do, I was just like, I, um, uh, I'm just a dude, I'm broken, like, and this is, this is how I'm, like, rebuilding myself, you know, right. and so I wanted kids to know that too, it's like, anything is possible, you can get over it any mountain because the Bible says it takes a faith of a mustard seed, you know what right. I mean? So that was like really it. It was just like just to branch out to people. Cool. So, so like how do you stay plugged in to like your faith when you're traveling and you're not, you're not able to go to church? Um, I have the Bible on my iPhone. Right. I do that and plus I have the real Bible in my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have a written by both of right. <laughs> um, in my backpack and like, you know, we do that and we pray every night before we go on stage and stuff like that. and. Cool. So, yeah, we we really sharpen each other too. I think I think that we're all in different places, and and it's great because the different perspectives, the you know all of that. Like Corey is sitting in the middle of us, and his life is completely different. Which rules? I mean, and and he has he has great wisdom and things in himself, and so I, I think that the climate of it is you know we just we just try and stay brothers with it. You know, sometimes we do dumb stuff, and we kind of have to remind each other of things, and, and other times it's just about keeping everybody encouraged because we are doing something that you know there's resistance because of what we what we want to happen you know we want God's presence to come and do the things that he he wants and so you know there's personally going to be you know those things that you have to deal with and like you said the broken part I think that we that's what we want to encourage people most about is that we're not any different than you you know we need the stage to work ourselves out just like you need whatever your purpose is to to get your to have God make you into who He wants you to be, and so we just try to keep that in that in mind with each other and ourselves, and, and that you know keeps us. We also read. So, like, do you guys play in other um, venues, like other than like Christian venues? Oh uh, yeah, I'll play anywhere. And so, like, you are like super bold on stage. You just you are raw with it. You're yeah. not a yeah, that happens oh, everywhere. It's you're not yeah. a or oh, not this, this. You said to the girls, like, do you guys do that outside of Christian venues? Yeah, I do it everywhere. I said that. That's like that's the like one thing I make sure I say every night. Yeah. yeah. And so, how do the the non-believing crowds receive it? Like, yeah, you know, like I think they it's like just fine. You know, yeah. like we're not. It's never been a problem. Yeah, it's never been a problem. Like, I mean, there's like. There's some kids that are just closed minded and be like, Oh man, you said bitch on stage, like you are not a Christian, you're not a Christian, you don't belong in that band. Right. And I mean, it's like, did you even listen to what I said? Right. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that like, we get that more often than we get a person who yeah. doesn't believe yeah. it's like, Oh, that sucks. You know, it's oh, okay. it's mostly I mean, because what you're saying is is it's directed towards what we want you to understand. Yeah. If, if if Jesus is the truth, if the Bible says that he desires all men to come to the knowledge of salvation, then us coming to you and saying that you have a purpose and you know not allowing other people to degrade you and those things like that, right. that's right in line with what he taught about who his children are. And so the Jesus thing happens when like, hey, why do you guys do what you do? And then you know we have the opportunity to talk about it. But the people that are offended, like I, that makes me happy. If I can offend you because of a word that I said when when I, I mean to accomplish the will of God, like let's work it out. One, if one of us is wrong, we'll figure it out if we can sit down together. And so let's do it because that's the way that it's supposed to be. It's definitely a conversation starter, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but then you get them to, to hear you say yeah, exactly. the, the, yeah, the gospel. We, yeah, we can sit down like just like this, like one-on-one, -on -one, and I can tell them like, what I meant. You right. Know? It's not rocket science. You right. know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, say you're not those things. Right. You know? like, I mean, I just feel like, I feel like, like these days, like, you know, 
like it's weird because it's like a bunch of girls. girls. <laughs> <laughs> not like that. Not like that. No, I'm sorry. Um, but you know, it's like it's like they're like, oh man, like I, you know, a lot of girls have like you know like father issues and stuff like that. And it's like, well, yeah, I, well, this dude makes me feel safe. Like he tells me this, this, and this. You know, but it's like, oh, he wants to sleep with me. Like, oh, okay. It's like you don't give your pearls to pigs. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you need to have a better foundation than that. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah than just like words and actions like it doesn't open the door for you tell them to screw off you know right. what i mean like this is how it is you know yeah. okay for kids that listen to your music and maybe they don't know who christ is what like what would you have to say to those guys mm, just find them find them for yourself like because that's the only way it's real. yeah it's the only way you'll ever it'll ever mean anything you mm -hmm. know like don't 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 go like look for christ just because i believe in him or just because i sing about him you know like do it because it's like okay I feel like I have a void, and I've never tried this. It's like you got nothing to lose now. You know what I mean? Just go try it. You right. know, like, I think just try it out. I think it's interesting. I don't. I couldn't hear you today, so I don't know. But he, well, a lot of times he'll say things too. It's like don't believe in something because some band guy told you to. Like, yeah. That that to me is a thing that's important to say. Not because there aren't people that don't mean well, but in the end, if your faith is tied to another person, if it's if it's founded in them, yeah. it's gonna crawl. You know, it's it's gonna crumble. And then when you get to that point, a lot of people. You know, they feel hopeless and stuff. It's like, well, this is what God said he would do because he's jealous. He wants you all to himself, not through another person or whatever. And so people, I think, also get kind of worried about us saying those things. And it's really, it, it's like what I said before, we're not afraid. Mm -hmm. If he's really the truth, then there's nothing that anybody could say that could change that. Yeah. And so if you're going to if you're gonna earnestly seek him like the Bible says, you'll find him. Why do, why do I need Jesus? What for? Well, I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm good. What do I need this Jesus for? Fine, the more power to you. Yeah, yeah if you're fine, know, then, like, you know, maybe you don't. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, not the right answer, you guys. <laughs> well, if, this, wait, 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 if I told you that, well, then maybe you don't. What would you ask next? Because you're expecting me to have the rhetoric of everything you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. And a Christian person tells you, well, well you don't. You, you don't. Like, well, you know, like, you, you don't need it. Maybe yeah. you don't. If you're fine now, I mean, maybe that's the truth. What would you say? But if I thought I was fine, then I wouldn't know. I would say, okay, I wouldn't know what to say. Well, but you wouldn't know what to say because you're like, wait, what? Yeah. You, yeah. Didn't, you didn't just go into trying convincing me of, right. of what it is. Right. I, I think that when people think that they're fine, I mean, our lives, we find ourselves many times in a temporary place. Yeah. And so you could be fine when you say that to me, and the next day you could be on your face in the apartment you're about to get kicked out of. Right. You just lost, lost your job, your boyfriend left you, and your cat ran away. Yeah. Then, then Jesus seems a whole lot more like you need him. Yeah. yeah. That probably is a country song. I, I just, I think that kids, it, it's very much, if I meet a person that asks me my that question, I would be more inclined to be like, well, I don't know, man. I mean, you're the person that can address your needs more. And then I take that in myself and I pray, and I ask God to reveal himself to that person. Because to me, a person who feels like they don't need God is very much a Paul kind of person and Paul's the one that needed God to knock him off his ride, put scales over his eyes and send him to a Roman's house for him to believe. So some people need a little bit more of a ride than others. Right. And I think the three of us <laughs> sitting in this chair are, are bear witness to that easily. So it's, I, I just I try not to get that frantic urgency that I think that when people tell you things like that Christians tend to get because they're so worried that they have to defend right. who Christ is to that person and, and it, we're unable to. Right. The languages of this earth do not have the ability to do it. It's just okay. Yeah. God, do do what you do. You know, yeah. knock God will, on their God will get them at one point. Yeah. You know what I mean, like you know, sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Absolutely. We cash. just we just try and be faithful and, and pray for them that you know when the, when the moment is there, the perfect witness or you know God Himself says the words that they need. And then and to me, the Bible says you know that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And when you know something, nothing can take it away from you. And so that that's what everybody needs. What do you guys, um, well, how do I get what you guys have? And then, then you explained you how. You, you buy it from us <laughs> for 50 bucks. No, I mean, when you, <laughs> being saved is accepting that Christ is the Son of God and that His death paid for your sins, took care of your death, and promised you an eternity. If you believe that in your heart, that He is God and the Lord of the universe, then you're saved. The rest of it is, 
you should read the Gospels now so you know who Jesus was. Right. And then after that, you should probably read Genesis and Exodus so you have an idea of where your faith began. And then by then, hopefully, you will have picked up your own Bible reading plan because you want to know the rest. But ultimately, that's... Read Kings. It's a Kings is good, too. David, First and Second Samuel, too, are awesome. It just really, you, ha you have to be, yeah, flawless. the whole Bible, the Bible is flawless. You just, you have, you have to be grounded in it, and um, we, we would, you know, we like to tell kids to get plugged in. I think a thing, too, that's a big mistake with the culture of our music is that whole don't judge me thing, because they feel like, because they have tattoos and stuff, that everybody hates them, which it's really more, people need to really see that they're still just human. Idiot, so. right. Yeah, that too. But it just really, you know, get plugged into a church, you know, the Bible says not to forsake the house. So that's and and I mean and that's how you stay accountable. You get you get headship. You get all those things that the Bible says that you need. And, and to me, that's that's the way to, to get it going. But you can't. I mean, to me, if you save a kid, it's like you said. You put a strap a bullseye on somebody and kind of like, okay, here's an inner tube. Go float in the sea. Yeah. Figure it out yourself. You know, that's that's not any fun for anybody. Yeah, so we exactly. try and we try and give them things to continue on that'll get them started like that. Well, okay, read Matthew now because it's the longest and most most descriptive account of the four Gospels and it'll give you the most background all at once if you actually read it. And then hopefully from there, you'll want to know more and you know maybe you'll buy this book or, or whatever. But um, it's about giving them something else to take away because if not, you've, you've given them one answer and the 20 million that are going to come after, they don't have anything to do with it. You're in the next town already and that's not yeah. even fun for anybody. Hi. Like what I said to answer the last one, I mean, he's, he's the son of God, he's the third part of the Trinity, I mean, we can, we can go through. To me, Jesus is the only person who always cares, if that ever makes sense. <coughs> you know that your parents love you, you know that your grandma loves you, you know, but this is the guy who, when you do the things that nobody else knows, he still loves you. And he knew that you would do them so long ago, and he still died. And, and made a way for you to to move. I think that like if if when you when you accept him you have this idea in your head of this is my father. Like none of us <coughs> none of us want to disappoint our dad, regardless of what he's done to us unfortunately. From the time you're a child all the way up, you have that thing in your heart of you want to please your father and, and that only goes with it and so I think the rest of it is being thankful that he he, God used him to make a way for us to be able to make our dad proud, even though we're so horribly inadequate without it. I think, I think too, I think Jesus, like, it, it's it's weird, like, you think of Jesus, you think of, like, a, like, calm morning, like, dew on grass, and then you can also think of, like, you know, a storm that's so furious and so pissed off that could tear the world apart. Like, if you think of that... At the same and, time. Like, in one person, like... I thought like that's who Jesus is, you know, and, and like when I pray, like, you know, I pray by myself after we pray as a group before we go on stage, and like, when I picture God, I picture a dude, he's like long hair, up in a bun, like this dirty dude, you know, like working in this like, you know, working in a shed, like, and I picture him making weapons, you know, like, and I picture, I'm like, God, you know, if I'm a sword, then keep like, put me in coal and keep hammering me. You know, it's like if I'm an arrow, then keep like putting feathers on me, you know? Or if I'm a bow, then keep sanding me down. Like you know, he's he's like a lion, you know what I mean? Like it's that's who God is. He's furious and he can, you know, wreck your crap, but he's also just like gentle and loving and, and caring, you know what I mean? Like,